Okay, welcome to another moth video. I really enjoyed making the last video analyzing a foiling tack and I thought we could make another video and as I was saying last time there are so many things to talk about on a moth. We could talk about um, you know, foils and setup and gearing and wand lengths and we could talk about sail shape and different types of moths or we could talk about launching a moth or getting foiling for the first time in a moth uh, or sailing in different conditions and, and so many different things. But I had this video in mind. Uh, it was actually uploaded as a how slow can you go and still foil video. Um, but at the start of it, it also has a jive. And we were talking during the tack video about how they compare to a jive. So there's this moment in the middle of a tack where the boat's leaning over on top of you and you need to steer through the tack and cross the boat and flip the boat over on top of you somehow on the new wing. Uh, and that's where tacks get really difficult. Whereas the jibe is a lot more straightforward than that. So when we're going into the tack, um, we were steering sort of in this direction, which is fine on the way in because we're already leaning into the tack, but it has all those complexities when we get through the middle and we want to end up on the new wing. In the jibe, we want to be steering in this direction. And as I was saying about steering this boat like a bike, where you want to be leaning into the corner, the first thing we'll need to do in the jibe is to lean this boat into the corner. Bring this lured wing down uh, more uh, parallel with the, uh, the water. Uh, and as we're leaning in then, we can do our steering through the jibe. And this is doubly simpler in a jibe because as we are steering through that jibe, if we kind of over uh, tilt into the corner, well then we just steer a bit more, which is exactly what you would do if you were on a bike and you leant over too much. But at the same time, the main is gonna power up more the more we steer through that jibe. So now the balance on top of the foils and the power in the main are both working with you to save yourself if you lean over too much. If you then, for some reason, the boat flops back up uh, and the boat's tilted up again, well then you can just straighten out the jibe or even steer away from the jibe in like an S jibe and then the power in the sail decreases, the foils come back underneath you and you can bring the balance down. So actually in this video you'll likely see the boat lean over, there'll be a moment of steering, it'll tilt back up again, and we'll straighten up, lean over again, a moment of steering uh, and straightening up again and then eventually <laughs> as you're doing this, hopefully smoother, uh, but if not, it can look a bit dramatic. Uh, you'll get to a point where you've come through the jibe, there'll be enough power in the main that you can start popping those battens across and sailing off uh, in the new direction. So uh, yeah, let's watch this video through then and see if we can spot those moments of, first we're going to um, lean the boat into the corner, Next, <coughs> we're going to start moving across the boat. Uh, and then once the boat starts tilting over, because we're crossing the boat, uh, we can then start that turn into the corner. Let's clear that and have a look. Okay, so at this point, I have freed my back leg just like I did in the tack and we have uh, got the boat a little bit more upright uh, where I can start crossing the boat more easily. And something I wanted to point out here is if you don't start leaning the boat over before you move, imagine if you tried to start moving when the boat was still leaning on top of us, um, you've got to pay attention to the fact that your weight is probably a lot more than the weight of the moth. So you are a significant proportion of the weight in this setup. So as you start pushing off the wing or pulling yourself towards your main sheet, uh, you're as likely as anything else to pull that boat even more on top of you rather than pulling you across the boat. So something else to look out for when you're moving your weight around in a moth. Uh, again, it's all kind of related to being balanced on top of these two um, points at the, at the foils. And if you pull uh, hard on the boat, you're likely to induce that kind of roll into it. So we straightened up the boat, uh, which has made it safer now for, for us to go across that boat. So at this point, 
I managed to get my weight across and you may have seen the boat tilt uh, fairly aggressively over on top of itself and the way to save that is to just steer more. So as I was crossing the boat we were going in a pretty much straight line the whole time I was bringing my weight gently across the boat and eventually we did get that kind of flopping over onto the new wing and then I was aggressively steering around and then we're in the middle of this moment here where I might straighten up again, steer some more, straighten up, steer some more, just to finish that, to jibe off. And you've really got all the time in the world here. Um, the boat's going downwind, it doesn't take an awful lot of power to keep it foiling. And you can just take your time uh, easing through that jibe. Um, if you've leaned too much, that's when you steer more. If the boats come too upright, you can steer back the other way. So very different from the tack where everything happens, had to happen in one go and you had to nail it first time. Uh, in the jibe, you've got this period of time where there's just uh, you can just ease it through. Um, one of the reasons, or basically the main reason why the jibe is so much easier than the tack. And that's the part of the mainsail. Once we got far enough through and generated enough power, and uh, and yeah, we finished the jibe effectively. Uh, as I was saying, with the tack, just sort of sitting on the wing is is plenty uh, of power to keep sailing. Uh, I didn't need to sort of dramatically hike on the new side, especially not in this uh, light wind jibe like this. And I think that's everything to say about the jibe. And now we're on to the section of the video where we're just gliding along in very light winds. Uh, this water's gone pretty, pretty glassy, and we're trying to keep the boat, uh, trying to keep the boat going as best we can. So step number one is, as I was just saying, keep your weight near the middle of the boat. Um, you can be pretty close to being right on top of this foil, and because the friction of the foils, we're already foiling. Uh, the friction is so low, it doesn't take a lot of power to keep us foiling. So we don't need to generate that writing moment. In winds like this, we're definitely at risk of just falling straight in um, because we're leaning out too much. So we can stay right near the middle of the boat. The second thing to worry about is um, the back of the boat uh, vent, uh, sort of uh, stalling first, so the rudder stalling first. Your main foil is going to be a lot bigger than the rudder. The rudders are kind of tiny foils. So if you're sat back in the boat, you're likely to overload that rudder first. The bow will pitch up, the boat will slow down very quickly, um, and you'll come off the foils. So if we can bring our weight forwards in the boat, and most of our weight is on this main foil, then all that's going to happen is we're going to just come lower and lower and lower. We start sort of spending that height that we'd got from boiling through in, in the good breeze. Uh, and we can sort of glide down and hopefully make it across to the next puff of wind. So that's pretty much what's happening here. We're trying to make sure our weight's uh, near the middle of the boat and that we're sitting forwards. I think in the middle of this I panic a little bit that the boat might fall on top of me and I grab the boom and do a few pumps. Uh, perhaps that's not the most legal manoeuvre but it got me through this time. Uh, so let's just uh, watch that through and uh, see how it looks. It did briefly uh, dip down to nine miles an hour as I was sailing through there. Um, I think it was pretty, uh, pretty good to be able to keep foiling through that uh, and get through, as I say, and get through to this next gust where we can get foiling again, get, get build the speed up again. Um, so that's all I really wanted to say. Uh, I wanted to compare that jibe to attack and, and why that jibe is easier and hopefully describing a jibe like that might help people um, understand some of the dynamics that's going on on in the boat with your with your weight with steering it like a bike with the power in the main and indeed how you move your weight across the boat can affect the, uh, uh, the pitch of the boat too so uh, yeah that's all I wanted to say for today and uh, thanks very much for watching